I have a roll call, please? Mr. Ansler? Here. Mrs. Angel? Here. Mrs. Neese? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Toadvine? Present. Dr. Blessing? Present. I'm present. Mr. Holman? Here. Okay. Rock and roll. Next, we need a motion to adopt the agenda. I move we adopt the agenda for December 17th, 2020. I'll second. We have first from Mrs. Angel, second from Mr. Lewis. Any discussion? No, sir. Roll, roll call, please. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Nice? Yes. Okay, and that's passed. Next, uh, for the approval of the minutes for the regular board meeting held on November 19th, 2020. Do I have a motion? I move for the approval of minutes for a regular board meeting held on November 19th, 2020. I second it. Okay, we have a first for Mr. Lewis, second for Mrs. Neese. Roll call. Mr. Tobine? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. That item also is passed. Next, we're going to move to the approval of the financial report dated November 30th, 2020. May I have a motion? I shall move for the approval of the financial report dated November 30th, 2020. Second. Okay, we had a first from Mr. Ambler, second from Mrs. Angel. Any discussion? Um, not unless anyone has any questions or has any concerns. We, um, some of the, some of my estimates are a little, um, there's a little larger variance than I would hope for, but I think that's all timing. Nothing is going, you know, as it usually does in this, you know, unprecedented year we're having. So I'm thinking we'll be okay. I'm just keeping a close eye on everything. So unless you have any, um, specific questions that's all i have for the board okay and tina i'd like to, to uh, thank you for all the craziness that you put up with and going on and <laughs> around the, the world around you i know it's difficult to, to to try to have any kind of a budget right now so thank you you're welcome i do my best okay roll call please mr amsler yes mrs niece yes mr toadvine yes Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Okay, that item is passed. Next, we're going to move to the first reading of board policy changes. Um, those policy changes are available on our website uh, for anyone that would be interested in uh, reading them. They're quite lengthy, so we're not going to read all of them this evening, but uh, they will be um, put out to the public if they would like to uh, see them. Um, Hey, Dale. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Um, recognition of citizens, staff, students, is that later? Yeah, on my agenda it is. I printed out the agenda. At the end, yes. so okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Sorry. I'm sorry. Good question. Mm -hmm. That's it. So uh, next, we have a consent agenda. Are we going to talk about any of the? We can, if you want to. I well, and I didn't see the thing about executive sessions. What's the change there, Steve? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, I have to. Can you remember off the top of your head? There was an additional item that was added that's eligible right. for executive session that hasn't been in the past on our policy, um, and and it you know just spells out a few things that were not that clear and transparent prior to 
this new policy. So it's um, OSBA's recommendations for us to consider adding to our new, well actually this is a required policy, so they want us to add this one. So if you read through it and you have any questions, we can certainly have a, yeah, we can certainly address those for you, but it's really just adding that number seven, seven. Um, which is marketing plans and specific things that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, the idea of that number seven, I think, was just because there are some items that if were made public, it would interfere with um, carrying out what should be a more, what's the word I'm lacking to say here, but the privacy, okay, is needed because you, you, you won't want to put the information out until everything is followed through with. Of course, it will be made public later if whatever occurs with that number seven, but. Now, I will say that on the deposit of public funds, we have met all the requirements for internal controls and cash collections. This requires that I put it in written form which I'm going to do for you guys and provide to you before you have to make your final decision. But it's just your direction to me to put our cash collection, you know, processes in written form. You know, as I told Sharon, just because I don't have anything else to do, we'll just write something up. <laughs> but it's, um, we've got some pretty good internal controls going on already. So we're just, I'm just going to put that in writing so that you guys know what our cash collection um, option is. And is that same thing true about the petty cash account? Yes, it's part of the cash collections because Keith Faber, the Auditor of State, has come up with some additional recommendations. They're pretty much in alignment with what we're already doing. So I'll just review those again, make sure I'm not missing anything, um, and then we can get something to you as quickly as possible before the next board meeting. Okay. And, well, I just, Mark, will you explain a little bit about the bonded employees what that entails. So currently, um, I'm under a, the treasurer has a $100,000 bond that protects the district um, for any errors, omissions, you know, di you know, any financial mishaps that may happen when the auditor comes in and says that just money was misappropriated, wasn't spent properly. Um, up to a, the district is protected by up to $100,000 with that bond. What happens is the bond pays out the district, and then the treasurer, little old me, has to repay the bond. Um, and treasurers felt that was slightly unfair. Um, I agree with that assessment, and so they asked the legislators, legislators to change the rules a little bit, and they did, giving the board the opportunity to cover me in with insurance, or the treasurer, under the insurance policy rather than the bond. An insurance policy, I can pay the deductible, you know, which is usually a little easier to, to handle as one individual than to have to repay a full $100,000 bond. Now, I'm covered under that bond until the end of my current contract, which is 731-2021. Um, I spoke to Ann earlier and said we could leave it as that or, it, you know, when I went back and looked a little bit, we can certainly cancel the bond and cover me under insurance if the board wants to do that and get a refund on the bond for the duration. I didn't think we could, but we can. Um, so, you know, it's up to the board. I would prefer to be covered under the insurance because $100,000 is a big price tag if I have to pay that back myself. Um, and if I do anything wrong, like you said, Sharon, you should just throw me in jail and make me repay anyway. Um, if I were to miss a, you know, if I were to embezzle money or do something like that. But sometimes, you know, mistakes happen and, th and things of that nature. So that's what the bond versus insurance scenario is. And with the bond, if it isn't you that have done it, but it's something to do right, with Right, I'm money, responsible for responsible. all the financial happenings in the district. So if money's lost in the athletic department or if an employee's overpaid, I'm held responsible. As you know, I signed the check, so then I have to pay it back um, and they, they name me personally. So that's why treasurers are bonded and and so that's why they're asking, that's why the new policy says the board needs to determine either if you want to do bond and or insurance. 
Thank so, you. You're welcome. That wasn't confusing enough. Because Gail's got that look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a dishonesty <laughs> insurance plan, which is, you know, I don't know why it's called that, but I guess to cover all aspects of any kind of lost money. So if the, if the, if the auditors do a finding for recovery, which is the worst thing that can happen in an audit, it could be for overpayment of an employee. It could be for, um, like I said, money lost in the athletic department. The tickets didn't add up right, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't personally count the money out in the athletic department or whatever, but I'm personally liable because I'm responsible for all of the district's financial stuff. So that's why these things have been changed. Because a lot of treasurers have had to cough up money lately, so. So this is a change the state legislature yes. has made and said mm -hmm. you can do it. Okay. Yes. If we switch over, when would we have to do that then? You said you could get um, well, partial. typically it's at the end of a fiscal year, so the, you know, 630, 7-1, yeah. So something to consider. Okay. It doesn't, I don't think the insurance would cover you if it's a deliberate act, you know, so if somebody did something illegal, whether it be me as your treasurer or another treasurer, it wouldn't, you know, it, it says dishonesty policy, but that covers the district. But then the in individual would have to be responsible for repayment. So. Yeah. Well, and like you said, if 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 you did something illegal or something like that, you're gonna get nailed anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> so nope. So that's what that's about. Yeah. So okay. Well, I think that. Um, the, the insurance, uh, as far as I'm concerned, would be the best route to go. I'm just wondering, uh, the question I would have when you said I had a, a, a quiz, an inquisitive look on my face, yeah. <laughs> is, you know, I know that the board president and the superintendent are also covered on a, with a bond, mm -hmm. right? Right, that's so, a different kind, yeah, it's the same kind of bond, but you can have both. The treasurer cannot, so I have to have one or the other. I just, I just, you know, wondered about that when it come time for, uh, yep. for it to have, have to happen. Okay. Um, so, what, well, I, I, I didn't even finish my question. I'm sorry. So, the the January first, then, if we wanted to add Laura to the insurance one, uh huh, and for and whoever the president happens to be, okay. Uh, then we can do that in January then or not? Well, I, if, I'll have to go back and, and look um, at the insurance, but I think the insurance plan already covers um, the board president, the superintendent, and the director of business. It's not an individual, so to speak, but the position. Okay. So I think right. you're fine there, um, okay. but I'll double check. Okay, appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next, Sorry we got to. No, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. That's that's what we're here for. Discussion's good. Um, Dr. Blesky and I had a discussion today about discussing. <laughs> so, uh, consent agenda. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the overnight extended student trips, swimming and diving postseason tournament, wrestling postseason tournament. Gymnastics postseason tournament, bowling postseason tournament. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve and recognize the following school support boost organizations Bauer PTA, Minesburg Band Boosters, Bayer PTO, Swimming Boosters, Jane Chance PTA. Mimersburg Visual Ensemble Boosters, Guard, Kinder PTO, Vocal Music Boosters, Mark Twain PTA, Viking Booster Association, Medderview PTO, Mimersburg Gridiron Club, Mound PTA, Mimersburg High School Cheerleaders Parents Club, 
Middle School PTA, Mimersburg Wrestling Boosters Club Incorporated, and Viking Soccer Parents, Boys. The superintendent and treasurer and CFO recommend that the Board of Education approve the attached memorandum of understanding with the Teamsters Union number 957. I have a motion. Uh, I move for the approval of the consent agenda A, B, and C. Okay. We have first by Mrs. Neese. Do I have a second? Second. Was it Mr. Hampler? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, the the uh, memorandum of understanding. Um, Steve, Steve, you want to? Give us a little bit on that one real quick. Or Laura, or you want me to? Rock, paper, I mean, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're definitely, we're aware of it. It's just uh, how did it end up exactly? Sure. Well, this is with our transportation department within the classified. Because when we went remote, we, it, was, it was an easier transition for our custodians to continue on their regular shifts and do their regular duties, of course, for our monitors and assistants. They could still assist in the classrooms with teachers and remote duties and also at our safe centers. Um, and of course, our food service was able to provide remote meals through our food distribution sites. But for our transportation department, because they weren't running their normal routes, except for those uh, routes that had preschool or the MD units, we, we had to kind of work within their classification and kind of add some duties such as the food distribution, subbing for other um, routes that if, if we needed some substitutes, any other duties within transportation. So we kind of needed to broaden their job description and, and base, make it effective during the remote times, which would be the most significant change in, in a learning plan for their regular duties from day to day and keep them employed. So that was the intent and that was the discussions and that's where we were able to come up with a, a really great agreement, and we appreciate all of their, um, you know, support and, and collaboration to get that done. We did it rather quickly with remote. So. Well, thank you, Dr. Bussing. I just thought that maybe that was nice to put out there for the public to understand exactly uh, why some people are doing what they were doing and so forth. So sure. thank you. You're welcome. Earning a paycheck. Roll call. Oh. Yeah, roll call, please. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Toadbine? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Okay, that's passed. Next is recommended uh, that the Board of Education approve the following resolution. Whereas the following extracurricular positions have been offered to those employees of the district who are licensed individuals, and no such employee qualified to fill the position has or have accepted it. And whereas the school district has then advertised the position as available to any licensed individual who is qualified to fill it and who is not employed by the board, and no such person has accepted for, <coughs> has applied for and accepted the position. Now therefore be it resolved that under the provision of the High Revised Code 3313.53, the following positions are declared available to non-certificated persons who meet standards adopted by the State Board and may be filled for a period of not more than one school year at the same salary and wage offered to certificated persons for the People Activity Program as indicated. The Swimming Varsity Assistant Coach, um, 30 for 3,000, no, 33,000, good night, $3,396.28. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. me, I can swim. Um, okay, may I have a motion? I move we approve of the resolution for personal personnel classified extracurricular employment. A second. So we had a first from Mrs. Angel, second from Mr. Lewis. Roll call, please. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Abstain. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Okay, then item is passed. Next we have items B and C for the approval of personal <coughs> personnel reports, both certificated and classified, and for supplemental and stipends. 
I'm going to read this for both of those. Employment in the Minesburg City School District is contingent upon the candidate submitting to and passing a uh, BCII and FBI criminal record check in acceptance in accordance, I'm sorry, with the Ohio Revised Code and pre-employment drug screening in accordance with the adopted board policies. How could I misread that after doing it six million <laughs> times? Yeah, so uh, do I have a motion, please? I'll move for the approval of personnel reports, certificated and classified. I second it. Yeah, and that's items B and C. Roll call. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Okay. Items B and C have passed. We need a, um, a, a first and a second for C. It's a separate resolution. Okay. I approve. I move that we approve the agreement. No, approve the personnel report. Okay. Supplementals. Sure, you got me in trouble. <laughs> you told me only read it once. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. We need, we need another roll call, too? Yes. Okay, roll call. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Abstain. Okay. It is passed. Next, we move on to agreements and contracts. It is recommended by the superintendent and director of student services to enter into an agreement with <clears throat> comprehensive education consultants. Do I have a motion? I move for the approval of agreement with uh, comprehensive education consultants, LLC. Okay. I have a second, please. Second. Second for uh, Ms. Ms. Angel. First for Mr. Amsler. Uh, Mr. Hellman. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Lucas, and Mrs. Lucas is on the line to talk about it. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Lucas. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Very good. Okay. Um, the, the contract that you guys are approving, um, will approve, is to um, have a psychologist work with us um, to, help fit in, to help fill in for the position that was resigned earlier in this year. <laughs> Um, so this, this person will be doing some testing with our students um, in, in uh, five of our elementary buildings and supporting one of our other psychologists and getting all of those evaluations done. So that's just for uh, to finish this out this year um, rather than fill that position at this time. Okay. Um, I was a little confused because I thought that we were going to possibly uh, have – someone who is qualified to um, administer the test but was not necessarily a school psych psychologist is, uh, is, is that what's going on here or? no so the, the what you're referring to um, is a thing that we talked about about how we will fill it for next year um, but those plans haven't been solidified yet, but that is for next year. This year, it's this is just trying to help but get us through. We're kind of limping along with short one psychologists and um, trying to get things done. So, uh, but, so for this year, we're going to contract with this psychologist to help us get the testing done. Um, and then, and is for filling that position next year. Okay, we're, so we're still thinking about doing what we discussed in the financial task force meetings yes okay just making sure any questions no sir yeah. okay um, thank you mrs. Lucas um, you're welcome I have a motion I, I got I oh I got a motion yes. I'm sorry a motion in to discuss all right <laughs> Okay. Roll call. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. 
Okay, item A is passed. Item B. It is recommended by the superintendent that the Board of Education approve the following agreement with the University of South Carolina. The Minersburg School District will provide quality clinical education experiences for the students enrolled in various programs. It's a long drive. I have a motion, nice. please. I move for the approval of agreement with the University of South Carolina. A second. Okay, I had a first from Ms. Neese, second from Mr. Lewis, Dr. Blessing, or Mr. Hummond, whoever. Mrs. Lucas. Actually, it's Oh, it's Mrs. Mind. Lucas. Okay. You're popular <laughs> this evening. Uh, yeah, so um, what this is, is we have a, a local um, speech pathologist looking for an internship. Um, she's, I think she's actually a remote student or an online student for South Carolina, but she lives here and she's looking to do an internship in our district. So this, this is one of those typical agreements that we enter into with the university um, so that they are able to do an internship with us. Okay. I know we do that with a lot of other schools in the area. That, that, yeah, that's all this COVID stuff going on, I'm sure there's difficult for them to get positions that they from the area where they live. Yeah, okay. that is correct. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. All right, item C. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of Minesburg City Schools hereby renews the membership in the Ohio School Board Association for 2021 at a cost of $7,986 annual membership and renews annual subscriptions to the briefcase electronic edition in the School Management News electronic edition in the amount of $150. <coughs> Motion. A move for the approval resolution OSBA Legal Assistance Fund. Yep. No, we're the wrong one. See. How about I move for the approval of the 2021 Ohio School Board Association membership and publication subscription. Perfect. Second. Thank you, sir. Hold on, I'm lost. We had a first from Miss. It's it's C. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yes. Um, Chris did a first and Miss Angel did a second. Sorry. And um, this is just something that we do annually and we've done it for as long as I can ever remember. Um, and it's a lot, there's a lot of good information and stuff in there for board members to read at a very uh, uh, low cost actually for everything that we, that we get. Um, those uh, uh, school management news is really, uh, Helpful, I think, was keep you know helping to keep keep us up on things that are going on right now. It's kind of nice. Okay, anybody else comments? Discuss no. anything? No. no, and you know I think some of the uh, sessions that we have remote because the conference was canceled have been helpful. I need to get to more of them, but yeah, I think. That's part of that fee too, right? Well, the, uh, the yeah. uh, no, could be that could be could part be. of it. If it, but, it, but what you're talking about is conference stuff, probably right now. Where they? Oh, um, okay. That's okay. Then it, okay, that's a different cost. Okay. Yeah, it's a different cost. Okay. Yeah, that's separate. Roll call, please. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Okay, moving on to item D. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following resolution. Whereas the Minesburg City School Board of Education wishes to support the efforts of other boards of education to obtain favorable judicial decisions, and whereas the Ohio School Board Association Legal Assistance Fund has been uh, established for this purpose, therefore, 
the board hereby resolves to participate in the OSBA LAF for calendar year 2021 and authorizes the treasurer to pay the LAF $250. May I have a motion? I already did it once. <laughs> Do it again, please. I move for the approval of resolution OSBA Legal Assistance Fund. Thank you, sir. I second it. Okay, we had a first for Mr. Lewis, second for Mrs. Neese. Uh, would that be you, Mrs. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, typically, um, the Legal Assistance Fund it was created to assist districts with statewide you know, legal matters, issues. you know, issues that we may need assistance in getting cleared up. This is not a fund that you would use for individual one or two, you know, uh, legal questions. Um, typically, when we call them for those district specific, they will tell you to consult your district attorney. But um, it does help when there is something out there that affects all of us and we're sort of in this together kind of. Um, so it is a very good legislative tool as well. And I think many, many, many years ago we we've used, used them. this fund. Yeah, I think most districts have at least once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything? Anybody? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Okay. And item D is passed. Let's move on to the um, financial agenda items. It is recommended by the Treasurer CFO that the appropriations and certificate of estimated resources be amended as listed in the attached report. I'd like to make note that those reports are available to the public if they would so desire to see them. Okay. Um, but do I have a motion? I move for the authorization for amendment to the appropriations and certificate of estimated resources. Second. Okay, we had a first for Mrs. Angel, a second for Mr. Ambler, Mrs. Hagman. Um, if you see on the APSUM report that's provided the spreadsheets, um, you see that we have like $681,000 reduction in revenues. Um, that is because as one fiscal year ends, you've got another one that starts. So we have to adjust our revenues by what we didn't spend in grants. And we're going to get 100% carryover on all those grants for the new fiscal year which is being updated presently and will be available in December for your approval. So we have to move it from one fund to the other. So um, from one year to the next. So um, that's why you'll see a negative amount this month and then you'll see a positive amount next month. Because of the pandemic and, and having to <coughs> shut schools down in March, um, they made an exception for all Ohio schools and allowed us to do 100% carryover because a lot of the items that we were wanting to do with the grants we couldn't do when the kids were not in the building. So um, you'll see all those revenues come back next month. Hey, why was this December and not June? You have carryover that you pay teachers on a um, stretch pay and so they get paid through um, August um, 30th on their old contract and then their new contract starts in September. So they get paid from the old grants until the end of August. Then you have until September 30th to report all that to ODE. Then they do an assessment, go through their, fig they figure out how much grant money is available, what's the carryover, ask any questions if they have any, and then they make it available to you again in November, December. Okay, I was just confused when you said fiscal year. Yeah, but because we have the stretch pay for teachers that are paid on grants or things of that nature that go through August 30th, and then we have till September 30th to report, we don't see that until November or December the following year. Okay, so you're basically saying any of the money that we have not spent, we don't lose? 
this year we will not. No, we're getting 100% carryover. Yes. Correct. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other? Nope. Roll call, please. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item A is passed. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, we move to item B. <clears throat> Be it resolved that the Board of Education at Minesburg City Schools hereby authorizes the treasurer and CFO to purchase faithful performance bonds for three years beginning 2021 for the following positions and amounts. Superintendent, $50,000. Board President, $50,000. Director of Business, $50,000. Do I have a motion? I move for the approval of the purchase of faithful performance bonds. A second. Okay, we have a first for Mrs. Neese, second for Mr. Lewis. Typically, you approve this in the organizational meeting, which is scheduled January 12th. However, um, because these bonds expire December 31st, you know, we thought we could go ahead and get them approved this board meeting so that we get them in effect January 1 and we're not, put, we're not backdating them because you have to go back to the insurance provider and ask them to, you know, bonding agent and ask them to make an exception, blah, blah, blah. So since I got the application early enough, I put it on the December board agenda. Um, this will cover anyone in those three positions. We don't have to do submit, submit a new application and doing it for three years gets us a $25 a year discount for each one. So it works out. Um, and as I said before, you'll be, they'll be covered with the bond up to $50,000 as well as insurance. So. Yeah, that'll almost cover a, a board member's paycheck. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait a minute. He's joking. Okay. All right. So I got sorted. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Ansler? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Okay, item B is passed. Next, we go to item C. <coughs> and I will just ask uh, you to explain this one. <laughs> I'm asking for the board's approval to do a transfer. So if I can get a motion in a second, then I can go into the discussion part. Okay, so we're just going to, I should just say, uh, we're asking the approval of a transfer for nutrition services. Correct. I make a motion we approve the transfer for nutrition services. I second. Say. And that's for a dollar amount of $200,000. Um, I was just a little confused. So I didn't say a recommendation. I'm sorry. Um, that's my fault. I apologize. So. so. Is that Mr. Lewis that seconded? Mr. Mr. Amsler. Between these two, so you make the choice. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Amsler. Okay, so um, as we've discussed before, revenues for nutrition services is down um, just because we're, you know, feeding less students, um, less meals are being served. Um, we're doing our best. Ravella's doing a really good job trying to reduce some of her expenses and to get as much revenue in here as she possibly can. But given the circumstances, um, we're looking at about a 70% reduction in revenue. Um, right now she is running about 376 compared to 762 that she's gotten in previous years. So 1,000, so 367,000 is what she's collected thus far compared to 760 or 792,000 that she's collected the year before in this time frame. Um, we can't let her fund run into the red, um, so we have to cover it because it's a required service. So um, we have to do a $200,000 transfer from the general fund to keep her afloat thus far. It's a lot of milk and cookies. <laughs> it is. <coughs> will, the, will the federal government yeah. eventually reimburse her for all these free well, they do. It, this includes her reimbursements. Already. It doesn't okay. cover the full cost of everything. Yeah. Unfortunately, with labor, 
um, cost and um, you know just regular operations cost her her revenues are far her expenditures are far exceeding her revenues at this point yeah and I would like to say that um, we have a great history of being in the black in the, for, in, for the food services and just here in the last you know couple of years it's been a, a struggle but you know and it's happening all th all throughout the state I mean in talking to other treasurers they're all looking at you know, facing the same kind of issues that their revenues are being decreased by 50 to 60 to 70 percent across the board yeah yeah you know and, and the point I was trying to make though was I, I know that um, most food services are in the red most of the time and they're dipping into the general fund and, and I would I appreciate that the people that were on ours are that efficient in doing a good job you know they're doing a very good job so thank you and part of the problem is we have lots of our students who are on remote who are not going and picking up lunches or asking for them so I mean that's a tremendous you know amount less of students who are getting lunch if they were at school they would probably be eating lunch there Right. Yeah. Paying for lunch. Yeah. What she's trying to say. So. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. we have this this the waiver that's in place, so all all students will eat for free. Right. Um, but you know, nutrition services typically will send out sell a la carte items and other things that help with their revenue and we're not doing that because we're delivering meals that are just breakfast and lunch but we have seen an increase in our breakfast sales so um, that's good but it doesn't you know it, it we've lost the additional revenue for kids being in school yeah yep that's a lot of money every day when you start thinking about mm -hmm. a thousand of kids purchasing lunches right there. Okay, um, roll call please. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mrs. Niece? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Toadvine? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll pass. we'll move on to the acceptance of donations. It is recommended that the Board of Education accept the following donations. All monies will be used through each school's 018 account unless indicated otherwise. $100 from an anonymous donor to the Minesburg City School District for the Community Connections Program. Two $75 Kroger gift cards from Cinda and Skip Gad value $150 to the Minesburg City School District for the Community Connections Program. $700 from the Miami Valley Leadership Foundation to the Minesburg City School District for the purchase of Chromebooks and PPE supplies. $228.75 from the Mimersburg Middle School PTA to the Mimersburg Middle School Cafe 301. $25 from Walmart gift, $25 Walmart gift card value, let me say that differently, $25 dollars $25 Walmart gift cards value of $625 from Our Lady of Good Hope Church to the Myersburg City School District Community Connections Program. Okay, first of all, may I have a motion? I move. Oh. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Fist fight, fist fight. No, I move for the acceptance <laughs> of donations. Second. Okay. So we have a first for Mr. Ambler, second for Mr. Lewis. Thanks, guys. Um, how, how, uh, would you explain to for people so they understand some of the um, programs and stuff that we're talking about here, please, Dr. Blessing? Like the Community Connection Program and the Miami Valley Leadership Foundation and some of those? Yeah. Sure. Well, I'll start with um, Miamisburg Leadership Foundation. I mean, that's in part of Hope for Miamisburg yeah. and the, um, the organization that Sarah Pel Pelfrey helps us, you know, make those connections. That, that's, so, I don't mean to correct you, but that's Miami Valley Leadership Foundation. Sorry, Miami Valley Leadership Foundation. So she brought that in last week. And so, like, again, that will benefit all. And it, like we put that in our Chromebook fund and our PPE fund. Um, 
And I think Steve is probably a better at the community co connections program. I don't have enough understanding of that yet. If you want to share okay. a little bit of that, I, Katie. Yeah, I can take that one. Mrs. Yeah, Luke, Mrs. Connect, Lucas. Community Connections Program is um, Sally Royer. It's our um, social worker. She works with um, getting resources for our community members and, and um, oftentimes agencies, families, um, other folks uh, donate to that program. Um, and that's to help support our students in need through Sally Royer and her efforts. Okay. I just think the the. The reason why I said that, I, I, I like for the people uh, to, that are listening or might be watching on, on television to, that are unfamiliar, now they don't know something about it. Because it's, it's really neat that we have those organizations that have been working hard to help us out. You know, and, and that, that's just awesome. Uh, I know the Miami Valley Leadership Foundation um, is just that it's in the whole it's the whole Miami Valley there's a lot of schools that are in it and a lot of communities that are in it and uh, you're right his hope from Miamisburg has blossomed out of <laughs> that and, that and that's that's really nice thank you roll call please mr. Ansler yes mr. Lewis yes mrs. Angel yes mr. Toadvine yes mrs. Neese yes okay thanks Thank you, everyone, for the donations. That's awesome, and uh, they are going to be used wisely. Next, uh, we go to Dr. Blessing for the <coughs> news from Joe Izakovich for the in the AM <laughs> AMVCTC. Uh, Thank you. Um, the COVID-19 update, based on the latest reports and recommendations, we return to full virtual learning experience starting Monday, November 30th. We will remain in this format until Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. MVCTC will return to its current blended schedule on Tuesday, January 19th and continue with that schedule throughout the second semester. Building construction continues and approximately 12% of the project will be ready for occupancy in early January. I had the opportunity to tour these areas a week ago. The areas include the Retail Ag Services Greenhouse, oh, Ag Services and Greenhouse, Natural Resource Management, Animal Care and Management, the Arena for Showing Livestock, the Barn, the Vet Tech Area, Agriculture, and livestock production area and the diesel power technology and heavy equipment area. The diesel power area is huge. It will hold under roof four complete semis, heavy equipment bays, truck bays, crane area for disassembly and tech areas. Again, these areas in the tour, these areas in the tour account for only 12% of the entire project. We'll keep you posted as our project continues it to progress. The good news concerning our Miamisburg students. Anthony Jones, Lauren Arthur, and Aiden Evans, all juniors in the graphic commercial art, were recognized for their own graphite self-portraits as an assignment, and their fantastic art was on display. Juliana Kaler, in the business ownership, was recognized for receiving her MLS Word certification. In our apprenticeship program, construction carpentry was highlighted and Caden Schmidt is serving his apprenticeship at Boone Restoration in Inglewood. That's it for December. Let me know if you have any other questions or concern. Otherwise, excuse questions or comment. Otherwise, have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'm hoping 2021 will be better for us all. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we'll go to our legislative liaison, Mrs. Sharon Angel. Well, you're talking to a very frustrated legislative liaison. <laughs> the legislature was meeting today to vote on some items, and I don't know if they passed them. One of them was um, not to give a scorecard this spring or this summer for this year's work with the schools and also to look at um, not holding the schools to the third grade guarantee the way they did this past year. And I don't know if that passed or not. 
I do know that they did not vote on the fair funding bill. The House voted on it, passed it unanimously, and the Senate tabled it, which means they have to start all over again from the beginning. So I, I, it, it is frustrating to me as a school, have been a school employee, a school board member, a community member, that we've had decades of schools not being funded properly, and we had a chance to do it, and they just fumbled it. So I'll just say that. <laughs> That's it. Any questions for Mrs. Angel? Next, we'll move to the Student Achievement Liaison, uh, Mr. Chris Amsler. Um, the Miamisburg City School District uh, student, November student of the month with Miamisburg Middle School student Colin Marker. He was nominated by his counselor, Monique Hobbs, and the Team 4 teachers. They said Colin Marker is an exemplary student who exhibits a positive outlook and attitude in the classroom. Colin demonstrates all of the Viking PBIS expectations, respect, responsibility, and safety. <clears throat> Other uh, building students uh, of the month for November was um, representatives include Bauer Elementary <coughs> School, Evan Zink, Bear Elementary School, uh, Dylan Klontz, Jane Chance Elementary School, Tiffany Hudson, Kinder Elementary School, Alexis Marshall, Mark Twain Elementary School, Owen Chandler, Medlerview Elementary School, Riley Wade Piles, and Mound Elementary School, Harper Bishop. Also at the Mimersburg High School, we have Marissa Gross. Um, says here, Colin will be um, honored at the January meeting are we going to be able to do that at the meeting or are we going to be wait we'll probably do that in school like we have over the last few months correct and with us being remote and then we also had um sean our business connection right the, the, the clocks didn't come in okay so we're going to do hopefully um, do that in january and we might even have two videos to present perfect so, so congratulations to all of our um uh, winners and especially uh, Colin Marker. Uh, so, quite an achievement. So, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Um. Unless you want me to do the National Signing Day one yeah, as go well. Go ahead. Go on ahead. You want me to do that? Uh, National Signing Day saw Alyssa Arthur commit to further her academic and athletic career at the next level. Alyssa has played two years for the Myersburg High School girls soccer team and was a varsity starter both of those years. She holds the single season goals scored and the single season points scored record for Myersburg. She earned uh, GWALK All-Conference, uh, GWALK National League first team twice, all Miami Valley first team, the Offensive Player of the Year, uh, Alyssa will be fulfilling her dream of playing at the NCAA Division I level at Kent State University. And I can attest that she is all that and more. She's really good, and congratulations to her um, for playing soccer at Kent State and at the next level. Yeah. And she's a beast. She is. You know, she's a beast, and, and, and to... Uh, Move on and play Division One. Uh, it's quite an honor. Okay. okay. Mrs. Neese, you're not on here. Yeah. Um, the Montgomery County Drug Free Coalition did not meet this month, so I have no news. Okay. Sometimes no news is good news. I hope. Yeah. All right. Um, is there anything else that anybody would like to share before we go around the table? Nope. Okay. Mr. Ambler, you get to continue. Start us off again. 
Um, I would let, just like to start off just a, a few things. I would like to kind of reiterate what we talked about earlier at the donations level, especially during the holiday season, um, uh, you know, that uh, community connections and how much money that went in there. I know Sally Royer does an outstanding job um, of providing our students and families in need throughout not just during the holiday season um, but she's always accessible you can call her at any given time and and um, I just think that all those donations coming in especially around this time of the year and with COVID hitting and um, people's jobs and everything else I just think it's remarkable and I just wanted to say again thanks for all those donations um, two other thanks that, that I would like to give is um, Number one, our Wizard of Oz that sits back there on a monthly basis. Tim, um, for all your time and effort that you take aside for us um, to put us on the air, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, you know, I, I know you sit behind the wall, but you're always thought of, and I, I just wanted to say thanks, and I appreciate everything that you do for us. When I say thanks, you've been sitting in that seat now for two years. Um, I want to, I know you have made numerous phone calls, meetings, um, so I know it's uh, a stressful job at times. Um, it is a rewarding job at times. Uh, we have all sat there, or will sit there in the future, Mr. Lewis. Um, we'll see. But um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say... Thanks for all that you have done as well. Thank you. Um, so, um, finally, I'll say um, we all want our kids in school. Uh, I think that goes without saying from everybody that's sitting in this room. Um, we are going through a situation that is like we've never been before. Um, our goal is to get our kids back into school safely as well as our staff. We're working diligently to do that. And during this holiday season, um, as you gather with family, you gather with friends, uh, the only thing that I would say is, number one, have a remarkable Christmas, New Year, um, be safe, be smart, and um, enjoy the holidays. So with that, I will send it to Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Chris. Well, f first off, finishing my first year on the board, I want to thank all of you, Sharon, Dale, Ann, Chris, fellow members of the board for guidance and just helping me get through this year. Tina, I ask a lot of questions. Thank you. Um, same Steve. Like I know all year I've been asking different things from you and Dr. Blessing. Thank you all for your patience. I, I only wish it could have been busier and I could have had more to do. <laughs> Goodness. Great timing. We can, we can put you in the seat over there for this <laughs> if you would like. Whew. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's been great. I probably have forgotten more than I've learned, but it's not anybody's fault but mine. I mean, everybody has really, really helped me in every step, and I appreciate that. Um, also, I wanted to thank, take the time to thank our nutrition services, our bus drivers, uh, everybody at the transportation department, business office for uh, setting up meals and getting those out to our satellite pickup locations. Uh, very, very helpful. I want to take a second to thank Sarah Pelfrey. Uh, for setting up the safe centers at the local churches. And I know Sally Royer really helped with that also. And other than that, uh, happy holidays to everyone and um, happy birthday to my wife, Becky. So, Got to stay in good standing, man. <laughs> I, I just want to thank the administrators and staff and um, my fellow school board members for you know, everything, it's been a hard year, and I just appreciate, you know, from the bottom of my heart, 
everything that everyone has done. And, you know, I do feel really fortunate to serve on the school board with you four people. I know there are times we disagree, but I think we do a great job overall. I, I feel that, and I feel really good about our team. So I want you to know I appreciate you, and Steve and Laura, and all the people that work in the trenches. You're truly appreciated, and it has been a hard year. I uh, finally got to see my grandkids, Grandma and Layla, for the first time in a year. Um, because of COVID and a couple other glitches, I haven't been able to see them. And it was fun to uh, celebrate the third and fourth night of Hanukkah with them, and also kind of an early Christmas. And um, so, yeah, there was some definite joy in that. And a little hard when I left to see the tears, but it was a good moment. And uh, I wish everyone happy holidays. I'll just say ditto to what everyone has said. I think I'm, I'm happy to see this year come to an end mm -hmm. because I'm looking forward to what we can look for in 2021, and I think we all feel that way. Uh, the entire staff has been stressed to the max. They've worked their butts off to make sure that our kids get educated. I'm not talking just about the teachers. I'm talking about the administrators. I'm talking about the classified staff. Everyone has pulled together to make sure we could do the very best we could do for our kids. And I'll reiterate what Chris said. I want everybody to celebrate the holidays, but please be safe and please be smart so that our kids can come back to us on January 11th. I'm getting very emotional about this because I know several people who have COVID and they're struggling with it. And I don't want anyone to go through that. So please try and be safe. and. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy whatever. <laughs> I'll shut up. Okay, I would just um, first of all like to, to, to take a quick look at our parents and what they've done over this last uh, uh, the year here. Um, ended the school year rough last year, started rough this year. And when I say rough, I don't mean that it wasn't, uh, it was rough for everybody in, in the whole United States. And, uh, you know, as Sharon said, hopefully things get better quickly. Um, I too, I've, I've actually lost um, two more friends to COVID this past uh, 10 days. That makes five. Um, so, and, and we're talking about, uh, I mean, minor work people, four of them. Uh, so, you know, that's, that, that, that's, that's difficult to swallow. So, yeah, you know, we do need to be very careful. Um, parents, thank you for um, sending your kids to school prepared to be safe. Um, you know, we look forward to um, having the kids back in school as soon as possible, you know, five days a week. That's our, that's our goal. But obviously, um, the mandates and things and recommendations that have been made make it difficult sometimes to do that. But um, we did, we'd had a really good first nine weeks of school. You know, we really did. And you know, the, the, the kids, uh, the kids want to be in school. So thanks to everybody that worked on that from, you know, the parents, the, uh, the, the teachers, the, the administrators, uh, Dr. Blessing, you have beat yourself up and to death, uh, uh, calling me at sometimes at 9:30 at night and asking questions and all that and and taking calls from people and so um, thank you very much it's it's very well appreciated um, I'm glad to see that we're going to uh, be very near having a Chromebook in every child's hands uh, in the in, in the near future uh, thank you uh, Mrs. Hagman thank you Laura thank you Steve um, and everybody else that worked on that. Um, you know, the, the grants and stuff were, uh, they're well appreciated. You know, the, the hard work that you guys have done. Um, Mr. Freeze, you're a good man. Um, thank you for everything that you have done. Um, if you wouldn't mind coming out here for a minute, real quick, we have a gift for you.
got you a cat. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the board and uh, administrators and people that um, donated for your gift here, we want to, from the bottom of our heart, thank you because, you know, this this is something that you've done for a long time for us, and it's very, very well appreciated. Thank, thank you all very much. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I guess I'm pretty well covered what I wanted to say. I, I would like to, to just, as, as, I, as Chris said earlier, uh, the Community Connection and the Miami Valley Leadership Foundation and uh, all the other organizations we have, the Minesburg Merchants, the Rotary Club, and people that just continually help our children. You know, whenever, whenever those donations and things are made, they're going directly towards um, our kiddos as I've kind of picked up on from Dr. Blessing. Um, so, so thank you, everyone. Um, yep, this has been a tough year. Uh, as, as, as being the president, uh, uh, I would say that from the other times that I've been president and this, this, this last year, uh, you could multiply the time and the uh, front with phone calls and people and get stopped in the grocery store and everything else about times 10 from what it would be otherwise. So. I'm done. Um, I just wanted to take a couple minutes. Uh, we did. We are hoping to close on the refunding of the bond issue um, on Tuesday, the 22nd. Um, but we do have some final numbers. It's a savings of two million four hundred and sixty-eight thousand, which is twelve point four eight five percent of present net value. If you remember, Mr. Cashel from RBC indicated that in order to um, when you look at it, a rule of thumb is if you have a 3% pr net present value, get, you know, savings, that's a good deal. Well, we got 12.85. Um, working on a press release that we'll provide to the community, and I'm also working with the Montgomery County Auditor's Office on looking at reducing the millage that we collect. So once we have, once I have all those numbers, and, the, and I want to wait till the close is final, um, then we'll, we'll roll that out as well. So um, an early Christmas present, if you will, to our community and reducing some of the millage that we are going to be collecting um, for future years on that debt. Um, so it was a little bit of a bumpy ride, but we got through it. So that was good because we had to postpone it a couple times, but we are going to hopefully close on Tuesday. So everything's been sold and, and, and signed. I know Mr. Toadvine and I have signed our names more than we care to admit um, on that issue, but we are we are at the finish line and on Tuesday should be able to book it and, and be done. So yeah, and that was some of that was done under midnight oil too. Yes it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if I may add just one thing to what, everything you said just so that people understand clearly. The school really is not the beneficiaries oh, no. of the money that we're talking about. It's the people in our community that are going to be the beneficiaries of the, the, um, the millage will be the same, but the amount that, that we're paying for the bond is 12 million less. So that means that you as a community is doing that. All right. Thank you. That's, that's a very important. Right. We're reducing the overall millage that we're going to be collecting on the debt by 2,468,000. Yeah. So overall, um, so hopefully we'll be able to make some, you know, um, reductions in the millage so they'll see that as a reduction in their taxes. So um, I just want to echo everyone else's comments. Have a wonderful and safe holiday. Stay safe. Um, come back to us in January. And um, if <laughs> we all are looking forward to a much needed break, <laughs> um, I think the staff and Everyone here at Miamisburg, we've had to turn on a dime sometimes and pretty quickly, and we appreciate everybody's willingness to be flexible and work um, with the district and the administration to do what's best for the kids. So um, enjoy the break, and it's much needed, it's much deserved, and so we'll see you next year. Thank you. Mr. Holman. So just a couple real quick comments. Um, kind of piggyback on what, what Tina said in terms of the community staff and parents coming together, you know, um, 
looking forward to the 2021, but I, th I think one of the things we really think about the holidays and what we're very thankful for again is when we look at our community of how they've really come together um, during the last couple months as you know, we've had to go uh, more remote learning and how the churches and community connections and all that have really stepped up to help, you know, in terms of that. And I think that really focuses on what Miamisburg means to a lot of people and why they really call it a hometown because you care for the students, you care for, for everyone here. And so um, just as um, all of you have been, you mentioned, you know, ending the school last year was a rough ending, but I'm kind of thinking very positive as we go into 2021 that we're going to end the school year on a high note. You know, we're coming back out, you know, Laura rolled out um, the plan that we've been working on to, to slowly get back in and, and very confident, I'm very confident by the end of the school year we're going to end on a high note and, and, and be going back. So um, just thank you for everyone in the community for supporting us. It's, it's been a rough time and we know it's been um, hard on parents who are working um, with child care and things like that but it, 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 it is it's been remarkable that we were able to stay in school for as long as we were able to and picking some of that back up after break so the Sharon said and Chris said you know be safe be smart over the holidays um, I know Christmas or whatever holiday you you'll celebrate just like Thanksgiving was a little bit different but take this opportunity of the of, of being different difference okay and, and see what different things you can do with your family and to value that family time together, so. Thank you. Well, first, thank you, bo the board, for your leadership. I mean, I think we, as um, administrators here and our, our listeners and staff, really appreciate all that you have done for us during this difficult time. And thank you to Mr. Tobin, our loyal president, for the last two years, so thank you. Um, I think in terms of our holidays, you know, we have ugly sweater contests. Let's have ugly mask contests. And let's make sure that even though we're with our families, we remember to spread out and keep those masks on and, and have a contest to see who can do. It doesn't have to be ugly, pretty, most creative. Um, but yeah, so that we can, we can see our families and, and enjoy that time. And I think with Sally and the Community Connections, the National Honor Society students, even though they have been remote, they are coming in and they are helping distribute um, all the wonderful donations and gifts and supplies to our, our families. So I wanted to make sure to, to give them a shout out. They, they've been coming in every day this week. They kind of go out in pairs and they help deliver all of the, the great donations and, and supplies that our families need. So that's been a, a wonderful asset as well. And, um, you know, in, in terms of 2021, um, I think Chris and I can both um, attest that we are um, hearing news of vaccines for not only for our um, healthcare workers and, and first responders, but also for educators. So that is a definitely a, a bright spot and a hope to provide us another line of defense and safeguard um, during this un, unprecedented time and an unknown time. So that's encouraging. And um, I heard today that the um, OEA is even um, endorsing that you know educators be kind of at the top of that list to provide that, that for those who, who want it and feel comfortable getting it, that that could help us move forward and return to that five day in person model that we all want. But we do appreciate everyone's flexibility and support and we're excited about January 11th and seeing all of our students in one form and another in the buildings. So, so I, I wanna thank you all just as a newbie to Miamisburg, it's been a great transition, all the staff, the board, the administrators, students, families, it's been wonderful. And my family and I are just very blessed to be here and be a part of all this. So thank you. Okay. Anybody have anything that they, anything else they would like to share? Okay. Next we're going to be moving into uh, executive session um, to consider the Appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. This is this particular executive session is to conduct the annual evaluation of our superintendent, Dr. Laura Blessing. There will be no uh, official business uh, after the executive session. I move we move into executive session. Second. We made a motion from. 
it's an angel. Second, was that you, Mr. Ambler? Yes, sir. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Fedbein? Yes. Mrs. Angel? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Okay. The time is? 7.17 p.m. 7.17 p.m. Thank you. We are officially in executive session. Thank you.